Hello, in this video we're going to look at a solution to the big diff problem, which is in the coding bat site under the Python section in this list too. So let's start by understanding the problem. So given an array of length one or more, we want to return the difference between the largest and the smallest values. And in fact, we can do this coding bat problem in one line, taking advantage of the built-in function max and min. Because if I take the max of a list, it actually generates the maximum value. And likewise, if I take the min of a list, it generates the minimum value. So I can actually return max of list minus min of list. Ooh. The parameter is not list, it's nums. So notice, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to stop this and restart. I'm going to actually highlight this as a learning opportunity. Is Often in class, when I'm talking about lists, I call my list list. But be careful, the parameter here is called nums, not list. And there we go. Now, even though this works, what we really want to do is we want to make sure we know how to traverse the list, find the largest value um, and the smallest value, and then take the difference when we're done. The reason why this is important is because when you transfer these skills to other languages, they don't necessarily have this, this mac, built-in max or min function. Furthermore, it's not always, it's, it's usually well, it's not always the maximum you want to find. It could be something else that requires you to look at each element in sequence. So to do this, I'm going to make a variable called maxv. And I'm going to initialize this to the very first element of the list. And the reason why I do this is because that means I know that the value um, makes sense. And what do I mean by that? What's, what people will often do is they'll initialize these to zero. And let's just talk about the max for a second. If I initialize my if I initialize my max value to zero, but my list only contains negative values, what's going to happen is when you're done inspecting all the elements, it's never going to overwrite that zero because zero is larger than everything else. But zero isn't in the list. So by initializing your max value to an actual element, you're guaranteed to, to find the maximum minimum value. This is a little thing, but it can have big impacts. So I'm going to set up a for i in range loop. 0, comma, length of nums. And a couple things I could do here. One way to do this is to say if max v is less than nums at i, then max v is equal to nums at i. And I'm going to do the same for the min v. So if min v is greater than nums at i, then min v equals nums at i. And then once I'm inside the loop, I'm going to return the max v minus the min v. Now, this is one way to do it. And one thing I want to highlight is if you've done this problem and you've done something like this, where you've actually taken a loop, you've set up two loops, where your first loop runs through and finds the max, and then your second loop runs through and finds the min. I don't want you to do that, and let me explain why. The examples we're looking at are really small lists. You know, they're five, ten elements at most. So that means you're going to have to, using this technique, you have to traverse the list twice, once to find the max, and again to find the min. That works, but now imagine that your list was a billion elements. That means that means if you have two loops, you're going to have to traverse your list. You're going to have to look at two billion elements. Whereas if you do them both inside one loop at the same time, you only have to traverse that list once. So again, with small number of elements, not a big deal. But with larger sets of elements, that's when it becomes an issue. And we always want to think about that when we're designing these solutions. Now, like I said, there's actually more than one way you can actually calculate the max and min. And what people most often will do here is they'll say, they'll use the built-in max function. So we'll say max value equals max, and we're going to take max v, comma, nums of i. So this is another way to do it, and it's a more common technique that people use. And there we go. And so I'm going to hit go. And it works. 
just to kind of close off here, remember, there's a really common mistake people make. And what's happened is we've put the return statement inside the loop, meaning that it enters the loop the first time and then exits. There we go. I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Have a wonderful day.